Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started on our webinar today. Just as a reminder, these webinars are intended for educational purposes only. And while we hope that you learn new information, keep in mind that the trainers presenting these webinars are not attorneys. Therefore, all information provided during the presentation and the Q&A session should not be construed as legal advice. All right, well, with that out of the way, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about everything you need to know about hiring military veterans. Now, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them into the question box and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end. So let's take a look at exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So today we're gonna to be talking about the things that you need to know about hiring veterans, specifically with um, benefits of hiring a veteran, uh, anything specific that you need to know for your processes and procedures. We're also gonna do some veteran myth busting and talk about some of the myths and uh, stereotypes that typically float around with hiring uh, former military personnel. And we're actually gonna bust some of those myths today and provide you with some really great facts that you can take back to your organizations um, and use to help uh, and encourage your veteran hiring programs. And then we're going to talk about exactly what you need to know from a um, uh, obligatory standpoint, as well as just some good tips and tricks. And then we will end with a Q&A. So let's jump into our content today. All right, so let's start with some fast and relevant facts about veterans um, that you may be looking to hire in your organization. So did you know that more than 200,000 service members transition from the military to the workforce every year? Well, it's true, meaning that each year the labor pool is being flooded with military veterans ready to get started in a civilian career. However, as of 2020, the unemployment rate for Gulf War era veterans was at 7.3%. Now, the Gulf War era veterans are any and all veterans that have served since 2001. Now, this unemployment rate was affected by COVID-19, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics released in March of 2021 that there was actually no significant change to the unemployment rate of veterans with service-connected disabilities. That rate always sits at around 6.2%, which is really high compared to the national average pre-COVID. Now, this leads me to our final fast fact, which is that 40% of the Gulf War era veterans have a service-connected disability compared to only 26% of all veterans across all years of service. This means that the veterans between the ages of 38 and 54 in the workforce may have a service-related disability, and it's important for employers to know how they can best hire and accommodate veterans in the workforce. Now, to give you some context, as of 2020, there were 18.5 million men and women civilian veterans in the United States. Many companies such as Lowe's, Home Depot, J.P. Morgan Chase, Raytheon, and even Intel make an active campaign towards hiring these men and women as they're leaving military life behind and entering the workforce. But why? Why is there such a targeted effort towards one specific group? In early 2017, the Sherm Foundation and the National Association of Veterans Serving Organizations found that despite some challenges in the short term, the long-term positive outcomes outweigh the negative. And a lot of the time, they found that those short-term challenges with hiring veterans were perceived by employers to be more challenging than they really were due to some negative perceptions and assumptions about service-connected disabilities, which is why we're gonna do some myth-busting later to hopefully get rid of some of those negative perceptions and assumptions. Now, overall, their findings were overwhelming that organizations who made the effort to hire military veterans saw a vast return on investment in the form of overall improved performance and bottom line financials, along with improved leadership company-wide and the creation of a more diverse and talent-driven organizational culture. If you need more evidence, this is not just a recent trend. A study done in 2013 by the CEB Corporate Leadership Council found that veterans on average perform at higher levels and are less likely to turn over from companies, generating a more positive outcome for businesses. Now the statement that has, been, that has exemplified 
that was exemplified in a case study of an organization with a thousand employees who increased their veterans new hire population by 25 percent saved three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year in turnover alone just by making the effort to increase their veteran hiring population so there is overwhelming evidence as to why hiring veterans is more of a benefit to businesses than the detriment that is often perpetuated out of stereotypes. In fact, some of those stereotypes are so profound that a lot of people don't know what's true and what's not regarding our veteran population. So let's take a minute to do some veteran hiring myth busting. So let's talk about myth number one. <clears throat> Myth number one is that military skills don't translate into the civilian workforce. Now, we're gonna make this a little interactive. I'm actually going to set up a poll and I want you guys to answer the question on the poll regarding this myth. So, you're gonna check all that apply. Have you heard of this myth, but maybe it never affected your workplace? This myth has affected hiring decisions in your workplace. I have never heard of this myth before today. I'm a veteran and I have been told this myth before, or I'm a veteran and I have had to correct this myth before. So let's see how commonplace this myth has been. I'll give you guys a minute. All right, let's go ahead and post the results. So it looks like about 40% of you have heard the myth, but it's never affected any hiring decisions. 40% of you also have never heard this myth before today. And then we've got about 20% who are veterans here who've been told about this myth before. And then we've got 10% who it has affected hiring decisions or a veteran who's had to correct these decisions. So this one's a really relatively well-known myth um, and it has affected some hiring decisions and some veterans are aware of this particular myth. So let's talk about why we're gonna bust this myth. Here's the fact. It is actually well-documented that veterans bring extensive leadership experience, mission-level focus, teamwork, and initiative to the workplace, which all translates from their military skills. And here is an added bonus. Veterans generally receive a high security clearance for the work they do the first couple of years out of the military. Hiring a veteran with active clearance can save employers thousands of dollars and months of time in background checks depending on your industry and security clearances needed for your organization. So this myth has been busted. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, here's the second myth. All veterans served in combat. Let's go ahead and post the poll. Let us know, check all that apply. All veterans have served in combat. Which of the statements have been true for you? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share the results. All right, so with this myth, about 38% of you have heard of it, but you, it's never affected your workplace. 63% of you have never heard this myth before today. And 13% have both are, are veterans and have been told this myth and have had to correct this myth. Now, the reason this myth seem, may not seem important to this particular topic, but it actually is, is the reason this myth is important is a lot of people assume that every single veteran saw combat and so all veterans have some form of disability associated with that combat. And this is where it can become very frustrating um, for veterans and employers alike because employers are working under one assumption and veterans are working under a different reality. So here are the facts. A significant number of troops deployed to combat since 9-11 of 2001. However, there are many that never deployed or even saw combat. In fact, 80% of military jobs are non-combat occupations. So this myth is not true. And a bonus 
In those 80% of roles that are non-combat occupations are common positions that you would find in your own businesses. Things like finance, logistics, administration, human resources, broadcasting, public relations, healthcare, and engineering are all common positions that are found within our military branches. So this myth number two has been busted. Let's take a look at number three. Myth number three is that all veterans have some level of PTSD and it makes them unemployable. So let's put the poll up. Choose what statements apply to this myth in your personal experience. You've heard about it, you've never heard about it, it's affected your hiring or decisions in the workplace and or you are a veteran and you've had to correct it or you've heard about it before. Let's see where we stand on myth number three. All right, let's go ahead and share the results. So about 50% of you have heard of this myth before, but don't believe it's ever affected your workplace decisions. 10% have heard this myth before and has affected hiring decisions in their workplace. 40% have never heard of it before and 10% are veterans and have been told the myth as well as had to correct this myth before. All right, so let's bust this myth. Here's a fact. Thanks to Hollywood, this stereotype has been perpetuated too much. Studies actually show that 10 to 20% of post 9-11 combat veterans have PTSD, which equates to approximately 550,000 veterans of the 18.5 million in the United States. Now, here is some perspective. To put this into perspective for you, 8% of non-veteran civilians in America have some form of PTSD from an experience in their life, like a car accident, a violent assault, or even a natural disaster. This equates to 26 million people in the United States that have some form of PTSD that's not related to any military service, way more than the veteran population. So based on this information, you probably have multiple people in your workforce now that have some form of PTSD or trauma and you never even knew it. So some of these forms of PTSD that are either veteran or non-veteran related does not make people unemployable. So this myth has been busted. Let's take a look at two more. Here's myth number four. Veterans can only follow orders because that's what they were trained to do. Let's put up the poll, choose all the statements that you believe apply. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and share the results. So this is interesting. About 60% of you have never heard this myth before today. 20% of you have heard it, but don't believe it's affected your workforce. And the 10% that are veterans here that have been answering some of these questions have heard this myth and they have had to correct it. So this one's not as common of a myth, but it has had its, um, I guess, hangups in human resource practice in uh, the past decade or so that this type of myth sometimes can affect employment decisions um, against giving veterans any type of leadership quality um, roles. So here's the facts. While service members in the military do follow orders in boot camp and officer candidate school, leadership is a key pill pillar of the military experience. Most veterans throughout their career must experience leading other people, taking responsibility, taking initiative, and solving problems creatively. The military is a non-micromanaging environment, so veterans know how to make key decisions every day to accomplish the mission, or in civilian speak, get the job done. Again, Hollywood has had their paws all over this myth. All right, let's take a look at the last myth. Myth number five, National Guard and Reserve employees have unpredictable schedules. 
I'm going to throw the poll up one last time. Go ahead and select the answers or the uh, statements that you believe are associated with this poll from your personal experience. All right, let's go ahead and share these results. So it looks like about 67% of you have never heard this myth before. 11% have heard this myth, but it never affected the workplace. Another 11% has heard this myth and it has affected hiring decisions in the past. And 11% of us are in the Reserve or National Guard and they have had to correct this myth. This is actually a common one. I get a lot of questions about this myth when, with regards to hiring um, National Guard and Reserve employees because they are a little bit different than veterans. So let's take a look at some facts. Now, the typical training schedule for those who continue to serve our country is one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer. That's usually it. Training does not just pop up and the details are usually made available to the employees months in advance. This is also true in the case of a scheduled deployment. However, there is the occasional active duty call in the case of natural disaster or emergency military deployments. But these are opportunities for your employees to service their communities by, and by extension, your community when they are needed. I'm not exactly sure where this myth comes from, but I'm glad that we busted it. All right, so now that we've busted these common myths, what do you need to know as employers? Employers should know how to interview veterans and train their managers to do so. Veterans are trained in the military not to boast about doing their civic duty. There's generally no room for egos in the military when it comes to their work. That being said, when you sit down to do an interview, you will need to ask specific open-ended questions to create a vehicle for veterans to talk about their relevant skills and experiences. Saying something like, walk me through your resume or tell me about your experience will not be as fruitful as with non-veteran candidates. Be specific and ask questions exactly about what you want to know pertaining to their experiences. Tip number two, don't let their resumes intimidate you. Many veterans do not always know the best way to translate their work experience into the military, excuse me, in the military into layman's terms for the workplace. Most of them hope to do that during the interview phase. The best thing you can do is familiarize yourself with the military occupational codes, also known as MOCs, so you can better understand their resume and have good questions lined up for the interview. Use the preliminary phone interview if you have to, to ask any questions about things you don't understand, or you can always look it up online. There are a lot of resources online for interpreting, interpreting military resumes. It may take a couple extra minutes and a little extra effort, but based on what we've talked about with benefits that come from hiring veterans, it's definitely worth the work. Tip number three is to draft veteran-friendly job descriptions. Try to shift your job descriptions from requiring years of experience to more competency-based requirements. In the military, the way you promote is 100% based on competency and not time in service. They base it on how hard you work and how much time you put into your military career. So it may be difficult for them to translate their experience into years in the workforce. The military has high standards of competency to achieve a new rank. So if they have achieved the required competency in the military, they will be able to perform in the workforce just fine, regardless of their years of experience. The next tip is to understand your obligations as employers for things like USERA, FMLA, and VEVRA if they apply to the veterans you're hiring. It's important to understand that National Guard and Reserve employees have different employer obligations that apply to them when they go off for training or, required, or, or they are required uh, to take a military-based leave of absence. And finally, knowing where to look for veterans who are job hunting is key. Typical job posting sites may not be frequented by veterans because there's so many resources set up for them through the VA and the Department of Labor to assist them in getting adjusted to civilian life. The website on the slide I have provided is a resource from the DOL to find the best places for you to look for veteran job seekers. 
All right, I know that was a lot of information and hopefully you guys got some really good information from it. Um, I know that hiring veterans can be something that can be intimidating when you're talking to owners of businesses uh, because some of those myths are per perpetuated and there are a lot more myths that I wasn't able to bust today. Those were just the top five that are, seem to be the most common in terms of hiring decisions. So I hope you guys got a really good piece of information from that and some great resources. Just as a reminder today, the presentation was recorded and you can watch it again. We do post these to our website so you can go to payentry.com and go to the webinars tab and watch the webinar recordings. We usually post them within 24 hours. You'll also be emailed a copy of the webinar recording tomorrow afternoon if you attended. We also have a survey following this webinar, so feel free to leave us your feedback and let us know if you have suggestions for any topics you want to see us talk about here in 2021. All right, I don't see any questions at this time, so thank you guys for your attention today. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the content, and we will see you next week when we are going to start a three-part series. This is part one. We're going to be talking about employee handbooks, which seems to be a hot topic this year. And we're going to talk about legally required policies and why they're imp important. So join us and sign up for each of the three parts of this three-part series. You're going to get a lot of great information about what needs to be in your handbook and why it's important. You guys have a great rest of your week.